Now let us go and see the intuition behind IDF which is nothing but inverse document frequency. So the inverse document frequency is given by the formula log of number of sentences divided by the number of sentences containing the words. Okay, And this log is basically to log to the base E. Okay, It is not to the base 10 but it is to the base E. Now let us see some examples with respect to the sentences and let us see how we can compute the inverse document frequency. Here is the sentences that I see. These are the same sentences that I have used for the bag of words. I have three sentences which is saying he is going to the market, he is going to play cricket, she is a famous person. Now again note what is an IDF formula. It is nothing but log to the base C, number of sentences divided by number of sentences containing the words. Now let us consider an example of the first word he. For he, how many times it is present in the sentences? So you can see that it is present in first sentence, second sentence but it is not present in third sentence. So the number of sentences containing the words will basically be having two value because two times he is present. Whereas what is the number of sentences that we have? We have actually three sentences. So you can write log into three divided by two. So this will actually give you a value somewhere between zero to one since it is to the base E. Let us see with respect to the second word that is is. Here I have log three by three which is nothing but zero. Okay, why we have three by three? Because the number of sentences is actually 3 and how many times is this present? It is present in sentence 1, sentence 2 and sentence 3. This is basically forming your denominator that is nothing but number of sentences containing the words. Now let us compute the idea for going word. How many times going is present in the sentences? 2. So I have kept that value in the denominator. In the numerator I have all the sentences as 3. Similarly you can calculate for 2 and the. Now please note that every words will be having a unique IDF values and it will just be having one IDF value with respect to all the sentences that is present. So that is the most common thing that you should take a note in inverse document frequency. Now let us go to the next slide and apply this to our eight most frequent words that we had actually computed from our previous bag of words. Now from this on the right hand side you can see that based on is going he to a cricket famous market. I will be having this idea of value that is nothing but log 3 by 3, log 3 by 2 and all these values that is getting computed. Now you have computed the term frequency and the inverse document frequency. Now the next step from the particular intuition in the PPT we have seen, we have to multiply this term frequency and the inverse document frequency and we will be having a value that will get formed and we can then forward that particular matrix to the model for better understanding in the words. Please note by getting this different kind of values. There will be some semantic information that will be preserved and it will be taken ahead for the model understanding. Now let us see how we can multiply this term frequency and IDF and this I will be showing in this PPT. So here is my PPT. You can see that the left hand side column basically shows you the term frequency elements of each and every word with respect to the sentences. And the right hand table actually gives you the inverse document value that you have computed by using inverse document frequency formula. Now you know that we need to combine these two values by multiplying it. So if I go to my next slide, this is a bag of words or document matrix that is getting computed. The first value is actually is. So with respect to sentence 1, what is the is value that we have? We have something like 0.16 and this is value is log 3 by 3. Log 3 by 3 will actually give you a 0 value. So you can write it as 0.16 into log 3 by 3. This in turn will give you 0. Now let us see for the next word with respect to sentence 1. It is nothing but going. You have 1 by 6 over here and similarly the IDF value that is calculated log 3 by 2. So here it is. You have 1 by 6 into log 3 by 2. And what about the third word? It is having 1 by 6 in sentence 1 and similarly the he value, IDF value is basically log 3 by 2. Again you multiply this. I have left these spaces as empty because I want you all to calculate it and try it out what all values you will be getting. Similarly, I would go to the second sentence. If I want to go to the second sentence, I will be referring to all these values that I have in my second column. Again, just see that what is the term frequency value of is over here. It is nothing but 1 by 6 and similarly the idea of value with respect to is is log 3 by 2. Always remember this value is going to be constant only the values of term frequency will be changing with respect to the sentences. 
So similarly, I calculate for the second sentence, it is nothing but 1 by 6 into log 3 by 3, 1 by 6 into log 3 by 2, 1 by 6 into log 3 by 2. Now let us see for the third sentence over here, for is value I am having 1 by 5 and similarly the idea value is basically 0. So you can see that 1 by 5 into log 3 by 3, this will actually become 0. Similarly going for going and he. Please do note, please fill this all the values which I have kept it as empty because this will be for your better understanding and how it is getting implemented. Now we have actually seen that how we can actually compute bag of words with document matrix. Here I have actually computed some of the TF-IDF document matrix for some of the words and with respect to sentences. I would request you to solve all these things so that will give you a better understanding. Finally, you will be seeing that you will be having this kind of values 0 0.007, 0 0.07 and 0.17. Now we have seen that how TF-IDF is implemented. But let us see through the coding mechanism by using Python and again we will be using a SKLearn library which is nothing but TF-IDF vectorizer. So let us go to the code and understand how TF-IDF is actually implemented. One thing to note is that all the process that we did in bag of words, that thing we are going to do in TF-IDF again, that is nothing but stop keywords, stemming, that is nothing but lemmatization. After computing stemming and lemmatization on this particular paragraph, we will be trying to implement the TF-IDF on this particular data text. Now let us see through the coding mechanism with Python. I'm again going to use the spider IDE to do this work. For using TF-IDF, basically I need to get that particular library from sklearn.featureextraction.txt and I have to import this library that is called as TF-IDF vectorizer. Please note that the same code I'm going to use, this was the code basically for the bag of words. Only the difference that I'm going to use is that instead of applying this particular model, I'm going to apply the TF-IDF model, okay. Now, the steps are same. You have to import the libraries that you require, that is top words, word net nematizer, and this is your paragraph. After importing your paragraph, you will be converting this whole paragraph into multiple sentences. That is nothing but tokenization. Create an object of word net nematizer. And after that, you have to run through all the sentences that are created over here. Since you have five different sentences, apply the stop words on top of it and do it by lemmatization. That is actually given by the list comprehension code. After that, once you get the new sentences, you append it. So let me just execute all these things once again so that we will be able to see whether it has executed perfectly or not. Now you can see your new sentences has been created over here. Now on the top of this, I am going to apply the TF-IDF model by importing the library from sklearn.featureextraction.txt and this particular library is imported. Again, the syntax is almost same as bag of words where I have to create a variable or an object, initialize it by using TF-IDF vectorizer and the max features which is nothing but 1400 over here. But I don't have 1400 words, what I am going to do is that I am going to convert this 1400 words into 20 and this basically means that the topmost 20 frequent elements. And after that, I'm going to do the fit and transform on this particular new sentence and convert it into an array. So let me just execute it. And I've named that variable as x1. What we are going to do is that we are going to compare x and x1 and try to see how these two differentiates. So once I execute this, you can see that my x1 variable has been created. Now let us compare between x1 and the x. The x value is basically the document matrix which is created by bag of words, you can see the value as Z2, 2, 1 and some of the values are 3 but here you will be getting somewhere between 0 to 1. This 0 to 1 values that are assigned to the words with respect to the sentences helps the model to preserve the semantic meanings for this particular words whereas in the case of bag of words you could see that many words had the same value so the semantic meaning was not getting preserved over here. So let us see some more differences with respect to the other, other words. You can see that different different TF-IDF values are actually being stored in this. But here in the case of bag of words, you have all common words, either it is one, two, three, based on the number of words that are repeated within a particular sentence. Till now, we have discussed a lot of topics like stop keywords. Then we have discussed about lemmatization, stemming, and then we have seen how we can create bag of words. What are the problem with bag of words? And then we finally went with the TF-IDF model. What was our aim? The, our aim was basically to create a document matrix 
and the values that were pop getting populated in them were basically integers right or floating values these values are very very necessary for the model to understand so unless and until we don't do this step we won't be able to make the model understand the text that we are providing them this is the text analysis part now the next part will basically be that how we can provide this particular values to our machine learning model and then implement some applications like positive and negative sentiment analysis or a spam classifier that we are going to see in our upcoming videos thanks for watching this video subscribe to our channel for more such videos a cat killed average is dead